Three is crown time uh, across in the states, and Michael, this was potentially the last time of Lazarus versus McWicked, although we probably weren't thinking that going into the race. It wasn't really Lazarus versus McWicked, it was Lazarus dropping out and McWicked smashing him. This is the Breeders' Crown Open for the boys at Pocono Downs, and that's McWicked in front, just smashed them, probably favourite for US Horse of the Year on this, and confirms what a wonderful horse he's been. I'm not sure they're the greatest open class horses ever, that's the front end of the field. At the back end of the field is old mate Laz, and he just had a shocker, so there he is. But Led, Lazarus, um, just dropped out. They scoped him, gunk in the lungs. You've got to wonder if the virus he had earlier, plus the 146 mile, just, just gutted him. Just, just bottomed just, him. Just gutted him. Yep. And I spoke to Duncan Taylor from Taylor Made Stallions uh, the next day, and he said a strange thing to me, but he's probably right. He said, in many ways, it's better that than running a struggling second or third. We're, we're upset for the horse because we don't like seeing him sick, but clearly that wasn't him. Clearly when Lazarus drops out like that, and the only other time he's finished out of the money was the Miracle Mile, he's got a virus. Now when you consider what he's done, you consider he's been all over Australasia, going to Perth, which is not easy, come back, blah, 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 came back home again, then went to the States, went up to Canada, got a virus, came back, 146. He's, he's had a remarkable year, and they are now uh, in very strong talks to retire him. So I think he'll be retired, stand in the Northern Hemisphere season. That'll cost him a few years, no doubts about that. A win would have been a lot better. Then he'll come home, or I, or I don't think it'll cost him years at all, Greg. No. So I think, without any confirmation, that'll be the last time we see Lazarus on a track. People will be willing to forget that. A lot of people forget this. Sundon lost half the races he was in, and he was a champion stallion. Where did Christian Cullen, champion domestic stallion, finish in his last race? I think he might have finished last. Sixth at Omaru. Oh, Pe people are willing. Was to, that in the Hannon? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. People are willing to forgive for those sort of things because they remember the great moments and Lazarus's list of great moments is so long. It wasn't a washout, excuse the pun, for New Zealand at the Breeders' Ground because Sha Tin, um, uh, who Grant Crab bred here and, and had, you know, at the early stages of her career, went to Dean Brawns. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, went to Australia, campaigned well. This is her in front, and she's so brave holding on. Uh, this is like 19 out of 22 for the season, or maybe 20 out of 23. Wins the open mare's pace, clearly the best mare in North America. She set a record for the amount of money won in the season, about 980,000. Well, she's still got the like TVG mare's race. So she could bust the million. The 23rd, 24th. Is she a chance for USTA horse the but they're year? They're talking or? about it, but Mick Wicked will hold more weight. Right. And without being rude, it is only mares racing. But yes. it's a remarkable thing. That's the first ever Breeders' Crown winner from this part of the world. Uh, is it Grant or Greg Crabb? Grant. 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 Yep. It is Grant, yeah. So well done to you, Grant. It's a hell of a thing to achieve. Um, yeah, first ever. And we shouldn't, just because Lazarus disappointed us, forget that um, it'd be lovely to see her come home as a broodmare, but that won't be happening. They'll be keeping her up there where she'd be worth a fortune. So by Tintin in America. Mm. So her at one stage um, went awfully close to, to winning uh, an Auckland Cup. Yeah, of course, uh, won a... Four year old, messenger. And Breeders' yep. Crown. And, and won, set the record and won there the, um, uh, Brilliant one horse. of Jules. Yeah. Yep. So, Very fast look, horse. Well done to, to everybody involved with Shartin. It's a remarkable thing to achieve. It's not a story we've seen a lot of because Lazarus has been the dominant story, but yeah, it's, it's still um, a great New Zealand moment here in the slush at Fokanoa. The, the aged pace at Kaikoura. We've got to show you the finish of this. Um, gee, he's arrived, this horse, Henry Hubert. Uh, race pattern didn't probably turn out the way he uh, predicted, John Dunn, but. He was really good. Cullen Burn flashes home. All you need is faith came off 20 metres. M Michael, it wasn't an easy race uh, for the horse that's in front at the moment, but he was very brave. But this was a, a, a terrific training performance and a great performance from Henry Hubert. And he tried so hard up the straight, he actually skipped. You know when they're trying really hard and they have a little skip because they get a little bit unbalanced? That was how hard he was trying. He's arrived. If he was in the New Zealand Cup, you wouldn't think he was the worst He's chance three ever. from four this time in, and, and he got beaten by three really good horses when he did finish fourth, so the, one the, of them was the, the horse he beat The stable was flying. Uh, I'm happy to see John back driving. Robert's done a super job in the interim. Uh, this is a horse who just adds depth to maybe races like the Auckland Cup heading forward. Mm. He's a genuine horse though, isn't he? He's a better horse than I thought he was. I, yeah. I thought he was a speedy youngster who wasn't going to come back, but sometimes they just need time to mature. Um, sad story, we've had a couple of these recently, which is not good, uh, coming out of mid-Canterbury. 
Um, Doug McCormick passed away overnight Tuesday night, I believe, and you would have known Doug better than I, but he's a guy who... Uh, they're the sort of people that harness racing is built on the back they're of. They're fabric. Exactly. Right, they bring these horses to the races for decades. I remember growing up as a kid on the West Coast, Doug would always have horses there. And some of them weren't much good. But they would lead around Victoria Park. He used and to they breed, would run, own, run. train, drive yeah. all his own, own horses. He trained and drove about 100 winners. Charlie um, Wood would be the best Charlie one. Charlie Wood, and he stood him at start as well. We've got a recent really... Bred type horse of one of his. Out of one of his mares, G Abbey. This yep. is Gil Favor uh, winning at Methven by Waterloo Sunset, who the story goes that he won on Cup Day. You may have even tipped him that day. And he went home and um, served G Abbey, would you believe? And this is the result of that uh, winning here. So Paul Nen, Waterloo Sunset, out of G Abbey, and a bit of acknowledgement there for the McCormick family, his, to his wife Shirley, his uh, son David, who still drives these days, and grandson Lawrence, who does a fair job with a pretty small team too. Uh, our thoughts are with you at this stage. He drove Michael up to age 84 would you believe? Do you want to hear a Doug McCormick story? Yes this, I do. I, I, will, I swear this is true. You, you're going to struggle to believe this. It is 100% true. I used to work for a guy who trained horses and it was a vet called Graham Sherman. And Graham lived just outside the Tinwald vet, uh, the Tinwald sales yards, the Tinwald vet clinic. So everybody's been passed here in the old days. True story, I'm about 17 years old. Doug McCormick turns up one day, he's got these two horses, I don't know what we're doing to them, I think they need an X-ray or teeth or something anyway. So Doug pulls up in the old, the old two-horse float on the back of the car, and he drops the back of the float. And I thought, okay, we should go get these things, and got my lead rope, and off I go. And Doug, no, don't worry about that. So Doug just walks around the corner, because we park the float there, we walk around the corner to the vet clinic. Doug just walked out, the horses, true story this, I swear, backed themselves out of the float, and followed Doug. No leads. And I'm standing up my lead rope and I'm thinking, <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, this is a bit odd. And Doug, he said, I'll be right, and just walks around the corner to where Graham was to come to the vet clinic, and the horses back themselves out of the float and follow Doug around. A true stockman. I, I, just, I just stood there and went, well, what is up with that? <laughs> and they just stood there. It was the most bizarre thing I think I've almost ever seen involving horses. He was a guy who just had that synergy with his horses. He loved them. And they were part of the family, like like if you had a dog getting out of your car and it followed you into the house. It was something I've never forgotten, and that's my favourite Doug McCormick story of of so many favourite ones because the green, I think it was fawn and green they called it back in the day, were at the front of so many fields, and often they got run over. But as you said, Greg, they're the fabric of harness racing, those people too. So see the McCormicks, um, I have fond memories of your husband, dad or granddad because... He was just a good guy. Yeah, and he certainly will be missed, uh, particularly by the mid-Canterbury fraternity. What's ahead for you this week in harness racing? Let's get around the country. Marawa 2, of course, they had day one on Tuesday. $25,000 fast track insurance pick six there. Underway Thursday night, 518. Alexandra Park, another turbo pick six there in conjunction with Addington. 556, the 10 race card. Of course, we'll be at Addington Raceway. And uh, we've got a couple of decent races there outside of these two. Two heats of the size stakes, one with Macmillan Equine Feeds, that's the last one for the three-year-olds, and the Alabar size uh, uh, heat number two there. Uh, Temaru on Saturday, $14,500 fast track insurance. Temaru Cup, 12-18, the 10 race card underway at that venue in Vicargill on Sunday. And they have the Riverton Cup there for $15,000 with DT Kings Transport. 12.27 the start time there. All right, the John Paul II Centre for Life race night. They get behind uh, a race meeting each and every year, and it's this Friday at Addington. It's an exceptional card. Uh, even one of the races, Michael, away from the size stakes heat, has three heat winners in it, headed up by Ultimate Sniper, yeah. who is the favourite for and the size stakes. major Trojans in there. It's a super oh, race. Great lead race. up to the size stakes, and then there's the size stakes heat. And Let's was, have a look at that. Well, there was one at Addy, uh, Alexandra Park last week, so it's really starting to roll into each other. So um, here's the race last week at Alexandra. Park, which isn't the strongest race ever, and look, I thought the winner was good. Uh, the trailer now has the option to go to Addington. I'm not entirely sure they'll take him, and Make Way was also good. So that's one bunch of horses. Then we head to this really strong race coming up at Addington this week with a lot of heat winners already. As you said, Major Trojan and Ultimate Sniper. Then the Sire Stakes it, which I thought, as good as it is, this was going to be Jesse Duke's race to lose. Oh, from that sources. barrier draw, absolutely. All-Stars with Better My Dreams in it, War Dan Delight as well, the Moon Shadow, 
Uh, Port Allegra is on the ballot and at a better act is another one of theirs. So uh, deep, deep race for them. Nirvana Beach is a fair horse uh, for Brendan Hill. Uh, but Jesse Duke, it's got to be his race to lose, really, doesn't it? He'll be a buck 30, buck 40. and. He led up last time and he was run over by a very good horse, an ultimate machete, who was a lot fitter than him. There's Wardan Delight directly behind Jesse yeah. Duke, never gets out. Change the barrier draws this week and Wardan Delight might be a chance, but if Jesse Duke performs up to his best, surely he wins. By the way, the horse running into third here uh, Better goes, get a lover. It's goes a race into one. the first race. Yeah. race one, Drawn one. barrier one yep. and probably should be winning for one, would Dunn. think. So, good undercard there. Yeah. Really nice meeting at Eaton. It's, it's become a meeting which used to be like, Ugh. And now it's a really crucial lead-up meeting. It definitely is, especially the way the dates fall. Uh, it allows horses to go there leading into the cup meeting and yeah, gives them a great lead-up for that. Let's have a look at race number seven. Now, this is the Alabar Sire Stakes uh, Phillies Heat here. We had one of those the other night, one by Cheesy Fingers. Uh, Ruby Rose, she didn't place in three starts at two, but man, she was good. Nakuru's two from two uh, from the Robert Dunbar, and they have flash airs as well. And Bazinga's won three races and was impressive at Forbury. Funny thing, these Philly size stakes heats, often you see horses who are good two-year-olds come back and, and they arrive, but often horses who didn't race at two come out and star in these. Adore Me was one of those. So often you'll see horses progress who didn't race at two and come out and, and develop. And Nakuru looks like a horse who's one of those ones who's very much on the way up. But yeah, Ruby Rose will be interesting. I thought last season she had plenty of scope and just whether she strengthened up enough to use She it. trolled the other day and trolled really nicely. Uh, that was behind Chase the Hat. Well, she's got a major problem because you're picking her this week yeah, in the that's gonna competition stop and you've had two goes. Mm. And no, point it out, Michael. None from two. That's but, me. You've had a dig at, at the big odds, though. But well, you're, you're none from to. two. Mm. Well, I was told. I was going to point it out. Yeah. Now, uh, why do we creeks in this race? Now, this one's raced by Peter and uh, Ben Smith from up there at Kaikoura and was really good winning race one on Kaikoura Cup Day. It's a quick backup, but ooh, I quite like her. She's out of Christian Creek, that's Swan Creek and Arnott's mm. Creek and all those horses. Um, I really like her, but she's drawn one the second row. That'll make it difficult for her. Yeah, OK, Cup trial next week's going to be interesting because uh, it'll be interesting to see who turns up. With this Friday meeting being what it is, those horses won't go there, so, yeah, live show next week, which will be interesting to see what we take out of Cup time and... The trotters and that sort of stuff. Um, the Woodlands runners, oh, uh, Miss Blissful cool. and Mr Kiwi, they've found for us. Alexandra Park race 10 and, and race number Ultimate 9. And Sniper, of course, is, is going to be in that good race. And um, Now the bets, uh, the punts. Oh, I love so, this part of the show. Yeah, well, the well, last week, I, I just wanted to back a winner during the segment. Well, Otherwise, you did I'll be that. Well, I've got one last week. Or something. I'll, I'll take 38 bucks. Please. Um, Ruby Rose for you. Yep. Macy Maguire for you. Yeah, look, barrier one should probably trail a horse that should run past. Uh, um, Cameron Shaw. Lover, very hard to go past. Cameron Shaw is the star of the show so far, and yeah. I'll, I will be yelling against April Rose. Um, you my, will be. <laughs> my apologies to the connections <laughs> yeah. uh, in race five, because I, I, I don't want the young fella getting too far ahead Stacey Markham from uh, Woodlands, of course, better get a lover. Earl Rich has found ultimate sniper. Well, thanks for that uh, egg roll. It's about the $1.45 chance that we were probably all looking for. Mm. A vine flyby there is a definite chance. Um, really nice mare for well, up your way. Well, it was to Mark McNamara picked Yeah, that's probably going to stop it to, mm. to boot. Right, that was a whole lot of stuff to get through mm. next Wednesday, even a more important show. Well, this time next week, more or less, the field will be up for the Cup, and the Cup trials will be upon us. So join us next Wednesday, 8.30, Gregory. You'll be in Christchurch, I'll be up here, and you'll have all the post-trials transcript. Yep, look forward to that. We'll see you in seven days' time. That's been your box seat. Enjoy your harness racing week ahead.
and a very good evening, everybody. Welcome into your box seat, brought to you in association with Woodland Stud. Some wonderful shots out of Kai Cora. Of course, they had two days, Sunday, Monday, enjoyed by all on course, and they got away with it weather-wise too, and some of the racing was spectacular. Inside two weeks, out from the Christchurch Casino New Zealand Cup. Very good evening to you, Mr Guerin. G'day, mate. Welcome back from the Cox Plate, and great job from you and Matt at Kai Cora. Big hi to everybody around the country. Hope you're looking forward to Melbourne Cup Week, then into Cup Week down there in Christchurch. But, Greg... Already, this has been one of the stranger roads to the Cup, and yesterday we had a major crash on that road, which has completely changed the market for the great race. Yeah, it certainly has. We've got a lot to get through tonight, and we start with that. Uh, Chicago Bull was outstanding on Friday night. Unfortunately, a couple of days later, as we uh, found out, he will no longer be with us for the New Zealand Cup. Spank him. He did exactly that to them in the Kaikoura Cup and did it in great style and some terrific sectionals off the front. Speeding Spur turned up, so last year we had Lazarus, the reigning horse of the year, the reigning trotter of the year this year, and he did exactly what everyone was hoping uh, to see. We'll do a bit of punching. Yes, we will. Uh, we'll have a look at McWicked, and the kid continues to tip winners on this show, and he's well ahead of uh, the ball at the moment. So let's get straight into it. Michael went to Alexandra Park on Friday night. Jack's legend, the runner-up in the Cup, was there. Most people were expecting him uh, to probably beat Chicago Bull. Chicago Bull's at the back there, starting off the back mark, and as we'll see, he does miss away. And at one point, I marked him 50 metres behind Jack's legend. So what he did after that was nothing short of remarkable. Yeah, I spoke to Gary Hall Jr. about that. He said he wasn't sure how we have the standing starts in New Zealand. And he, he straightened and squared the horse up too early. And he was standing for too long. So he missed away. And as you can see here, um, I had the, the watch on him. He missed by four seconds. So he was four seconds right there behind Jack's legend, who's a very good horse, a Harness Jewels winner, and of course second in the cup last year, as you said. So he's in front, and I thought he would win. Gary Hall Jr. said, on millions to beat him at this stage. But this is why Australians are so good to have in these races. He moves and he attacks, he doesn't back off. And Greg, we've had some pretty sedate racing down home leading up to this cup. And this, why, this is why Chicago Bull would have been great for the cup. He gets up outside Jack's Legend and absolutely gives it to him down the back straight. The fact he was able to do this, and we'll talk about what happened subsequent shortly, I think silenced all his New Zealand critics. A truly stunning performance from the Bull. To the lead from the legend, Chicago Bull over Jack's legend. What a win that Chicago Bull. He gave up a stack at the start and he's given them a beating. Chicago Bull, fabulous. Yeah, brilliant performance from him. Geez, only a uh, pit pony is that there's nothing of him. Home in 54 2, 27 2 after giving uh, Jack's legend that start. Um, it, w it was a great performance, but. The next day, mm. things started to unravel. Yeah, they did. So Saturday morning, they're giving the horse the saline or the drench. They give them post-race, of course, they're allowed to, just to get, you know, get circulation the circulation and yep. stop them being dehydrated. Uh, the horse has taken fright, and he's flipped over backwards. And that's not something I see a lot from harness horses. You see it more from the gallopers. Often someone will jump on and they'll backpedal. Uh, and they didn't think it was a big deal. So they work him and jog him Saturday morning. And Sunday morning, everything's good. Then they started to detect soreness, and the horse took him to the vets. He's, this is a really strange one, Greg. Uh, he's broken his wither, and he's got between six and eight fractures in his wither, which is obviously the top part of the shoulder. When you look at a horse, you come down the neck and... Where the saddle goes. Exactly, yeah. where the saddle goes. So he's broken that. Well, uh, it's bizarre. Look, it's, <laughs> the vet told Gary Hall Jr., who is obviously heartbroken by this, that... For a horse to break its wither, because horses do flip over backwards from time to time, one or two breaks may happen. Six or eight. So he's fallen, obviously, very awkwardly, and he's now in the box for two months, then paddock for two months, and then he can go back into training. But the open class season's basically finished by then. First things first, the horse, the most important part. So he's going to be all right, and they think he will race on, whether he returns to his best, as a lot of horses don't, after a serious injury, who knows? We won't know that for a long time. Um, but that's very sad for them. I think for Gary Jr. and Senior, this was a race, Greg, they dreamed of winning because they didn't get on the mighty Quinn here. And Gary Senior often comes to cut week and you do start to you know, think it's, it's a race you can win. And after that performance, they would have thought, we're in this. Well, he went favourite in the cup, let's yeah. be fair. He went to favourite. And, and so he should have. And 
in the scheme of the world, in the scheme of real tragedies and people who are sick and people who pass away, this is not a tragedy. When a horse gets injured, it's never a tragedy. But it feels like a tragedy to them and it would be heartbreaking. They were very good about it, both senior and junior, very mature about the fact that, you know, these things do happen, but it, it would be a gutting experience. Well, it'd be right? gutting for Addington Raceway as well, because let's face it, off the back of that performance, he was going to enhance the talk leading into the Cup at least. And there were going to be a lot more people in Perth about lunchtime popping down the pub mm. to watch Chicago Bull in the New Zealand Cup. You're right, he's a wonderful little horse and he's a strange horse because a lot of people don't seem to like him for the reason, and I understand this, so much hype comes out of Perth that someone's the hyperbole can be, oh, can be not justified. But this horse came out and did something on Friday night that earned him an enormous amount of respect, and then that happened. And I really feel for them. Um, as I said, this is going to feel forever like the cup that got away. I'm not saying he was just would have turned up and won. Well, I it's, don't think he, it's I think, not I think he would have just turned up and won. No, no. But, but, but it's going to feel a very gutting experience. Gary Jr. was, as I said, very forthright about it yesterday. He might go to Addington this week to drive Major Trojan. Uh, in a very strong support race down there. But we are now ballless for the Cup, and that saw a general reshaping of the market. Ironically, what didn't see too much reshaping of the market was the Kaikoura Cup on Monday. Because Before we get to that, let's just look at who might oh, have yeah, been good, good point. in this Cup. Um, Chicago Bull he heads the list now, but you, you, you talk about Lazarus, Vincent, the Auckland Cup winner, Kevin Rocks is obviously in the States now too, the Orange Agent, we'd love to have had her there. Last year's size Stakes winner, Chase Auckland, Sheriff the Derby winner, Titan Banner who's been placed in the well, Cup. And second in the Auckland Cup last I mean, year. Have Faith in Me, former Auckland Cup winner, one time New Zealand Cup second favourite and Miracle Mile winner. So these are the horses who either, to get on this list you have to have raced in the last year and have gone to a Cup Carnival, the Inter Dominion or Miracle Mile, apart from the Orange Agent who didn't do those things. Then the Bull, Soho Tribeca, Jillaby Kung Fu, Lenny the Shark and Myfield Marshall. So the first three home in the Miracle Mile are gone. The first, uh, Lazarus is obviously gone, so the first two home in the Inter Dominion final. And of course, the winner of most of our major races last year, and then the winner of the Auckland Cup also in Vincent. So it's a remarkable list, Greg. I can't remember a time in harness racing or, or either code where this many good horses have disappeared off the radar. If that was the New Zealand Cup field... You'd be wrapped. ..or the Inter Dominion <laughs> yeah. field, you'd be thrilled. But And, and it's not one thing, it, uh, a variety of reasons. A little horse flipped upside down. Mm. I mean, Lazarus was sold for close to $4 million. So it's not like it's just the speed factor and we've run so hard and fast that they've broken down because of that, because Lady the Shark retired relatively sound. Now, it's just been a weird array of things has happened and we've ended up... The New Zealand Cup's like the Melbourne Cup. It doesn't really matter who you run in it. It's still a great day and it's always a great experience. And I still think the race will be, be a great race. We'll have a look at the market now and, and people keep saying to me, oh, there's no depth to this year's Cup. Well, that's just rubbish. Ultimate Machete is a multiple Group 1 winner, as is Tiger Tara. Uh, Dream About Me is a million dollar mare. Eamon Maguire is a, a fair enough horse. You take some of those horses we've talked about now that have that have dropped off, and yes, it hurts. Jack's Legends a Group 1 winner. AG's White Sox a multiple Group 1 winner. Ultra Orlando's Group 1 placed. Th there's still depth there. There's just no star. That's all. I, that's the well, way I view it. W what you're doing now is. <laughs> You've actually got a very even bunch of depth at that next level. Like, the champions aren't there, and you're now comparing apples with apples. You put Lazarus in here, and maybe at his best Chicago Bull, and there's a little class edge factor, or in Lazarus' case, a big class edge factor, but it's still a great betting race. I mean, um, Cruz Bromex a Group 1 winner, Star Galleria's Group 1 multiple place times, a, a you know? A, the bizarre thing is if all of those horses were eligible and turned up, some very good horses would be missing the would race. Would be missing out, yeah. So, as I said, Cup Day is an experience, and it's still going to be a great experience. A couple of years ago, Smolder was in what I thought was a pretty poor New Zealand Cup and ran second. But Arda Rooney won, and it was historic because Kieran Manning came across from Australia, and, and there was lots of historical aspects to it. So it always produces a great storyline, 
but I do 100% believe the cup is poorer for the, uh, the, the, the absence of Chicago oh, ball. Yeah. And, and, and it's a sad story regardless. I, just, I don't like hearing about a horse getting hurt. Let's have a look at, uh, or have a listen to Barry Purden with regards to uh, Jack's legend and get his take on how he went last Friday. I suppose your horse has gone well. He's just met a horse who's gone supersonic. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, you know, excuses, the um, Chicago Bull was too good. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm ple- I know it sounds silly to say, but I'm, I'm pleased with Jack's legend where he's at. I mean, he, he's only had probably the two runs. The first start, he was, took no part. So, um, you know, I think we're still on target. You know, I'd like to think that um, after the Cup trial, we'll be pretty right. He, it wasn't until last year when he, he rode on the Cup trial, he won that, and I thought, you know, he's really ready now. And uh, so hopefully that'll happen again, Mick. Zach had no choice but to go to the lead when he began so quickly and got that tactical advantage over Chicago Bull. In a major race, is he probably a horse who's better following, Barry? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, as you say, Zach had no choice. He got left out there and he pressed on. And, and he, he did a little bit of work to get there, but, you know, he should have been able to do that too. But, um, yeah, no, look, I think we're still in pretty good shape, Mick. I'm, I'm happy with him. You've seen lots of good performances in this grade at Alexandra Park. They don't come much better than that. Chicago Bull was outstanding. Oh, yeah, no, he was. And, um, you know, he put it to us down the back, 26-something and 27-something home. So, as I say, the best horse won for sure. He's still clearly on the rise, I think, Jack's legend. I echo what you asked, Barry, there, with regards to his better following the speed. The cup trial will be D-Day for him. And, of course, we'll have a live box seat next week. Straight off the back of that, we'll have that race. There'll be some trotters that you'll want to have a look at, too, from the uh, the, from the cup trials, too. So uh, that'll be an important show next Wednesday look, night. I think some of the, the little minutiae of things, like we're going to see at Addington on Friday night and the cup trial and how horses stand are going to start to matter now because the last couple of years you watch the cup try and you go, oh, that looks nice, but I don't really care because Lazarus is going to win. And I think now every little detail is going to become specific and important to people. It's intriguing. Um, Friday night's going to answer a few questions around Ultimate Machete. What didn't answer any questions was the Kaikoura Cup. Two things. I, A, didn't see this coming, and B, I cannot remember a Kaikoura Cup, Gregory, where the first two home aren't going to the New Zealand Cup. And then when you go further back, and this is going to be really intriguing to watch again, it gets really hard to make cases for the horses who finish behind them. I know that's not just a matter-of-fact thing, but it was a very odd version of the Kaikoura Cup because Spankham, who's in front here, is not a horse we think about as an open-class horse. And yet here he is beating Pat's Delight, who's another horse we don't think about as an open-class horse. Eamon Maguire takes the lane. Spankham ahead. Pat's Delight. Eamon Maguire's getting an inside run. Spankham still ahead. Pat's Delight tries hard. And then Eamon Maguire. But it's Spankham. And Spankham won it. Spankham has beaten Pat's Delight. Third over is Eamon Maguire. Congratulations, Tim. Uh, he's a neat racehorse, this. And once you've found the front, geez, you've run some closing sectionals there. And they just couldn't catch you. Yeah, that's right. He's um, he's been a lovely horse right through his career, and you know he's probably unlucky last year not to pick up a big one, and you know he's come back a little bit bigger and stronger again this year, and you know he thoroughly deserved it today. You took the lead off Eamon Maguire. You had Pat's Delight sitting alongside you. How confident were you coming off the back, and just how well was he travelling? Yeah, look, he travelled really well the whole way, and you know he's right there with me, and you know once the plugs come out, he, he really lifted, and you know he's so genuine. He was you know right to the line. The sort of the further we went, he was he was holding Rick quite nice. Large group of owners here, of course, uh, the Brecon Racing Syndicate, connections that raced Lazarus last year, uh, the Woodhams have been good supporters, and Jim and Ann Gibbs, they can't be here because Jim's celebrating a milestone birthday. You've just given him the greatest present. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, lucky, a great bunch of owners, and they've, they've been a super support of mine you know, since I've been at Marks, and um, you know, this is a great way to repay them. Congratulations to you, Tim. You've taken out the 2018 Alabar Kaikoura Cup. Thanks very much. Yeah, it was a terrific performance by him. You forget quickly that uh, at two we thought he might be the best going around. Uh, he's had a few problems, as we know, but his first two runs this time in, both outstanding. At Ashburton, he sat parked and turned it up, won that race. Second was Ashley Lokas. He won on Kaikoura Cup Day as well. And, of course, uh, his first up run was phenomenal, Michael. He His sectionals at Addington, in behind all you need is faith, and Ashley Lokas, were remarkable. In saying that, he was fifth favourite, and that's where he sat in that field. 
I gave him no chance. Not because I don't think he's good enough, I just thought he would end up further back because he was drawn wide. The start was absolutely everything. But in saying that, he still easily held Eamon Maguire. We'll get to Pat's delight in a second. Eamon Maguire, we'll hear from Natalie, didn't appear to handle the flat track, but this is, this is a, a great comeback from this horse. He won the Sire Stakes at two and had won one race in 10 starts since. And that was the heat of the Victoria Derby, a heat. That was his last win in January. Well, yeah. And he hadn't won a race as a three-year-old before that. So he's a horse who could have easily been sold to America and you never would have given a second thought to. Now, all of a sudden, he's in cup contention for 10 seconds and we find out he's not going to the cup, they're not going to pay the entry fee. I presume he'll go junior free-for-all and then maybe the major free-for-all. But even if he's in the cup, he'd be $21. Like, it's... It's, it's maybe indicative of this open class bunch that I still think Ultimate Machete might be the best of them, but gee, it's hard to make a case for some of these. Now, here's the Gallopers' early doors, and this changed the complexion of the race, because Star Gallery is in the light blue, and just outside him, so he is a can-can, which... As not, does Cruz Bromick. As does yep. Cruz Bromick. So they are the two c crucial factors. Now, out of those two... Uh, Cruz Bromack was very, very good. So he was. Yeah. Amy Maguire leads and then hands up to Spankham. Right, this point of the race, even before Spankham came around and got the lead, what were you thinking? I thought Amy Maguire Couldn't would get win. enough on him, could you? Absolutely not. And, and like Jack's legend at Alexandra Park on Friday, two laps to go. The TAB eventually wants to start betting and play. Well, I'm glad they didn't <laughs> on this race because you could not get enough on Eamon Maguire here. And he's totally underperformed. The horse to watch out of this is Cruz Bromack. He's coming from three back on the outside and he's coming three, soon to be four wide. Hard to do at Kaikoura. I thought, Greg, he was the only horse in this race I want to back in the New Zealand Cup, if at all. Star Galleria, he's... Well, he's in a power of pain, Stephen Reid. I don't think there's any doubt about that at all. Um, you could argue that he didn't handle the track, but since he's come south, it's just been a real roller coaster in terms of his preparation. Started the year. Yep, and he's coming down. Well, it doesn't mean a roller coaster. Yeah, roller coaster's gone like that. He's just no, gone he's that got way. down that yeah. way. <laughs> he hasn't gone. There's been no this yet. Yes. Let's hear from the beaten drivers and see what they made of the Kaikoura Cup and talk shortly about a very good Pat's delight, by the way. Well, Ricky Pat's delight, he's made it no fluke off the back of that win at uh, Forbury Park and he's run well today. Yeah, no, he went super. That's probably his first go with the big guns and sat parked most of the way and, and run a 26 up and quarter, so can't ask him to do any more than that. OK, what was he like early, Rick? No, he, he went away quite nice. Like, you know, he's never had a stand in his life to this year, so, I mean, he's got a wee bit to learn about it. So I was, I was really happy, you know, if he had a wee bit better run, he would have pushed them. Natalie, things panned out for you, but not the result you wanted. No, look, he went OK. I just sort of felt that he never really could get up to the top speed on the track for some reason. Um, you know, sort of, I ran the first bend, I just felt I could have lost him. Just, yeah, just wasn't overly happy with the way he handled the track. I thought he would have, but hey, we always get it wrong sometimes. OK, he's a horse that we know can get a little bit keen. How was he out there today? And he was really good, really good and settled. He stepped great, um, sort of had to drive him up to find the top. But, you know, he was, he was really good, you know, no excuses. Um, he, he had his chance, but he just wasn't good enough. Back to Addington, do we see a better horse? I would think so. Yeah. Mark Cruz Bromack, what did you make of his run in the cup today? I was quite happy with him. Uh, you know, he just missed away a little bit and ended up. He, he didn't get a bad run, but he just probably struggled when I did come wide with him on the track. And uh, yeah, when, when he got balanced up, he ran home quite good. What do you make of him at the start, Mark? Is there a chance that we can look forward to the New Zealand Cup with some confidence that he'll pace away? Yeah, look, I think so. Um, we'll, we'll do some work on him at home and that, and just one of them guys you just catch on the day and he can be very good. But uh, just today, he went sideways, and when I balanced him up, he, we let him go straight away. So we're just one of those things, if I'd just been walking a step forward, he might have been OK. He seems to be a great follower of speed, Mark. Is that his chance in the Cup? Yeah, it is, really. Um, He's probably better with one run, um, and you're just reluctant when you do go with him. If you go too early, well, he's got so much speed, he'll come to the end of it. Stephen, a little bit of a head scratcher. What did Tony have to report? He just said he never travelled at any point. Um, yeah, I think we're in a bit of trouble, Matt. OK, 
know, going forward to the New Zealand Cup post race. Are you happy with the way that he's pulled up? Well, I am. He's actually come through the run really well, but um, I could see, like, at the 800, he was not holding the uh, the back of the parked horse, which gave me a lot of concern. Certainly around the last bend, I could see he was not holding the back at all, and then he just fed and him just whacked up the straight. Maybe the fact that Eamon Maguire, I think, is a genuine cup chance, and he's trailed, and he hasn't been able to peel off the leaders back is that maybe there's a chance that it was the track but to be honest we're in strife two weeks out from the cup we are in a lot of pain after that run okay I want to take you back to the start of the race Stephen he bobbled away did Tony have anything to report there well that's another thing I mean I didn't even discuss that with Tony I mean this horse is like just such a professional from the stand he can't even step away now so I don't I don't know I don't know what to say about it um we're going to like try and change a few things up in the next two weeks but if I was a punter looking in if you took the 13s I'd be sitting back and waiting to get the 25s. Big run from him today Johnny. Yeah it was super run uh, Matt he um, just got a wee bit lost at the start like last week he, he had room on the 20 metre mark but uh, you know a few more horses around him he bit claustrophobic but uh, no I thought his run afterwards was super. Okay, what about him at the start? Does, does he give you a bit of confidence that if things do pan out that he would pace away? Yeah, I think so. Like He, did, he got it right last week and I think it's just probably one of those things you just, the more practice he has, the better he'll get at it. And, um, you know, it's just a learning thing for him, but he'll get it one day. Okay, a strange old Kaikoura Cup. I would suggest that the winner will go to the Junior Free For All, Free For All as mentioned. I think Pat's delight will go the same way, Greg. Yep. Was the winner of the New Zealand Cup in 13 days' time in that race? No, no. I think the winner will come out Cruise of the horse. Bro Cruise Bromack, no. Eamon Maguire, no. No, not for me. Okay. Um, Cruise Bromack is a chance to run in the money. They're both a chance to run in the money, but I think we're going to have a look at Tiger Tara in a moment, and we've got two horses starting off a back mark on Friday night that'll have a massive part I need to ask you a quick five play. questions. Pat's Delight, turning into a good horse. Yep, genuine open class. Okay. Eamon Maguire, what? I'm just going to put it down to the track. I still don't think the 3200's right up his alley either. Okay. Cruise Bromack. Yeah, sit in one run at them in the cup, a distinct threat. Star Galleria. What, Power of pain. What, what would you do if he was yours? I was talking to a couple of senior trainers about what they thought of his preparation so far, and they've said there's only one thing you can do now, and that's freshen him up completely. Freshen him up completely and hope that fresh legs... I, I'd take him to the beach and I, I would just, just do, what I mean. do, do, do something, something different. to change yeah. his mindset because, you know, the hard thing is it'd be really tempting now to miss the cup and you can't. No. It's 800 grand, it's too much money and maybe drive him dead cold but you could make a case, look, if we go junior free for all, get his confidence back free for all, then the inter-dominion but it's too much money and you've come this far. So Did be... you see the cup winner at Kaikoura? I think Cruz Bromack can win the cup. I do. I'll be surprised if any of those others do. And that's not slagging Eamon Maguire, but I, I've, I've all along thought he wasn't a natural 3-2 horse. Who is a natural 3-2 horse? Is the horse who sat parked in the Cranbourne Cup the other day. The reason we know this in here is Tiger Tara sitting parked outside San Carlo. San Carlo's a very good horse. He's no star, but in Australian racing on the smaller tracks and the smaller bends, Gregory, Sitting Park's a lot worse than here, which reminds you what a great horse Lazarus was because he did it in an Inter-Dominion and a Hunter Cup. But he's going to win this Tiger Tara and he gets just comes to the, the end of it here. But there's no disgrace in this. No. And the thing about Addington is most, most horses in the New Zealand Cup would hand up to him and therefore he probably won't have to sit parked outside anything. He can win the Cup. There's absolutely no They broke 55 that. seconds there, and you're right about San Carlo, he's won 23 races from about 35 starts. Yeah. So around that track it's very difficult to run past one too, isn't it? It is. It's, it's, it's a finicky little track, Cranbourne. Now we know he's coming for sure, he's a good standing start horse. There's a lot of pluses, no negatives. I'm not sure he has New Zealand Cup winners stamped all over him, but this isn't your normal New Zealand Cup. Those 11 or 12 horses we mentioned aren't there. He's the horse to beat in the cup. I've got a funny feeling one might beat him because he runs second or third so often in big races. He often but, finds one just but they, better, doesn't they, he? They, the one who was better tended to be Lazarus, so it's impossible to make a case against him. Um, we get to this Friday, and this is the race where favouritism could change again because Tiger Tara deserves favouritism if Ultimate Machete gets beaten here. But 
if Ultimate Machete comes out, steps, which he should do off 30 metres, because they, they yep. tend to follow them out, and produces what we think he can produce, then he'll start favourite on Cup Day. But this race is still... He's going into this, three starts this season, and hasn't run In the a money. place. No, he hasn't. So this is a crucial race for favouritism for the Cup. Because don't forget, co-mingled pools, the Australians are going to want to back either Tiger Tara or they're going to want to back Ultimate Machete for the Purden Rasmussen Factor if he wins this. It's a deep race, this. Uh, the fixer, crucial for him as well. He needs to bounce back. He was outstanding, of course, winning the opening two races, the National uh, and the Morris Holmes, I think it was from memory. Um, here he is at the trials. I wanted to show this, uh, Michael, because this shows that he is somewhere near his best again. Look, he is, but... Oh, I That's Cruz Bromack out wide. I don't like backing horses who have had setbacks on cup trails. They so rarely win. There's been a few over the years. Just an excuse, Mr Way Badly, one day at Ashburton and bounce back to win a cup. But on this and on everything I've seen so far, I would rather be on Cruz Bromack than the fixer in the cup. Um, they've got five there, Pert and Rasmussen. I'm pretty sure Mark will drive Ultimate Machete. Um, Tim Williams will drive on Dream About Me. Me. So then Natalie chooses one, and I would suggest... Johnny Cox. Johnny Cox and Blair Orange. Blair Orange. Yep, get that's the other two to the play with. scenario. So, yeah, this is crucial this Friday, because if Ultimate Machete steps away, then he comes into play, and he becomes the horse a lot of horses might end up to. But if he doesn't step away or he underperforms, then Tiger Tara takes that slot. There's not many horses in this cup who can bully other horses, but those two, those two are the they're two. natural bullies. Yep. And that's really interesting. And also Dream About Me. I wouldn't mind seeing Dream About Me driven with the sit. Well, she will be this week. I'm absolute. Well, I mean, there's no way he'll be hiking around, I don't well, think. I, I just wouldn't mind seeing... I haven't seen her come out and sprint this season. And she hasn't needed to, but I wouldn't mind seeing her try that because... She... She sprinted up at Omeroon, you know I mean? but she trailed it, it, from about the 400. I don't mean to be derogatory in saying this, and I'm not trying to slag her, but she hasn't shown me any speed this campaign. Hmm. I know it's because she knows she's going fast, because they're all going fast, but you know what I mean? Yeah, just, that well, I'm just imagining that. No, 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 you're not imagining it. That oh, that's real good. sharp speed. Because sometimes be I imagine this things, week, Greg, I, and I just imagine... No, no, I don't think you're imagining that, Michael. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who think you imagine things, but <laughs> okay, no, so, that's not so, one of them. So... Um, Cup tip now. Uh, yes. Here it is. Yeah, who it is? I'm with the machete. You're with him? Yep. I've mm. moved off Dream About Me and I'm with the machete. I'll and I think Ultimate this week I'm only... All the way through. Yeah, you're going to get off him. That could change by 9.30 on Friday night. OK. He needs to step and he needs to be a bully. But he may well do that. So um, it's been a lot of fun, the road to the cup so far. And I just get the feeling... There's still some more twists. Exactly. There's another little detour we're going to pop along to. But um, we'll talk about detours. What about the open class trotters? Yep. Last well, week, Monbay was coming back and then he didn't. We'll talk more about him after this break. Back in uh, to your box seat as we continue our look at Kai Korda and uh, some of the great shots that our team, the Canterbury crew, they I know we talk about uh, some of the ability of our, our crews and, and camera staff, but look at some of these shots, Michael. Did you did you see any seals when you were there? Well, no, because I got there late. Normally I'm there the day before, but oh. I didn't get there till too late. We oh, left that's, that's Matt Cross very, there. It's not a very good story. So that's not a story at all. Yeah. Um, thanks for that, Michael. OK. Uh, we need to get into the South Bay Trotters mm. Cup. And this race is in its 20th edition. It's really uh, become a sought-after race, if you like. And I can do it had won it three times. Uh, Bordeaux the last couple of years. And the reigning Trotter of the Year turned up and did this. 
Still leads. Speeding Spurs the neck away. Two to Destiny Jones and the Libra's Gift. Speeding Spur has his head in front of Ronald J. Then the Libra's Gift and the Almighty Johnson. It's Speeding Spur. Too classy, too big, too good. Speeding Spur won it. Has beaten Ronald J. The Almighty Johnson ran third. The Libra's Gift ran fourth. Congratulations to you, Josh. He's done it everywhere, this horse, both sides of the Tasman. Now he's done it by the sea. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a pretty good win today. Um, as you say, he's sort of done it all over the show now, and um, you know, it was a pretty cool track to get the job done. Not an easy track to come wide around the last bend. Uh, how confident were you that he would get to Ronald J? Because he was rolling in front. Yeah, well, he was. He just gave me such a great feel from the back straight. Um, I just sort of knew when I took off on him, he, he was always with me, and... Um, even though he sort of found it a bit tough around the corner, I sort of always felt like he was sort of going to get there quite easy. Great bunch of owners in this horse. Uh, one Richard Dick Taylor's here today. He's had a few health issues, uh, but he'll be loving this moment, being able to be on course and see him and, of course, the Woodlands team, a few All Blacks involved. It's just a great story, isn't it? Yeah, well, it is. They're a great bunch of owners and people, and, you know, I haven't seen um, Dick for quite a while, and I only briefly caught up for the race, and, you know, these guys get great pleasure out of this horse. He's, you know, he's been such a great horse over the years, and, you know, he's still got a few wins left in him. Look, he goes over 900,000. The seven-figure mark is approaching pretty shortly, and there's some decent races coming up as prep towards the Dominion would look to be almost ideal at the moment. For sure, we've been wrapped with his preparation so far, even the start before he ran third and, um, you know, like it was only a mile and just the way he hit the, hit the line, we were so wrapped with that and, you know, going into the Dominion, we couldn't be happy with the horse this year. Well, congratulations to you and your dad. Your father does such a great job and has done for a long time. Uh, all the very best in the build-up to the Dominion. We appreciate it, Greg. Yeah, he's a terrific trotter, isn't he? And I don't want to underestimate just how difficult at Kai Kaikoura it is to come off a back mark. OK, it was 10 metres, but to come wide round that bend at that speed and uh, get over the top, that, that was uh, an outstanding run. Well, well, Matt Cross was tipping him really strongly, and I thought, what are you doing, baby brand? Because I, I thought it was massive unders for what he had to achieve, and he was aided a little bit by a couple of breakers, but, gee, it was still very, very good. Like, I haven't seen a horse do that under those circumstances in an open class race at Kaikoura for a long time. So he was fantastic. And, and sadly, with the sidelining again of Mon Bay, um, I'm not saying he's the best trotter in the country on ability, but by, he's the best performed by a mile. And he's got the free-for-all, if they want to go there, the Dominion, then the Inter-Dominion. Now, he's the most likely of the New Zealand horses to go to the Inter-Dominion because he's travelled there before, he'll cop the series. He, he's got a lot in front of him and he just tries so hard. He, he's like one of those horses who, who doesn't have ginormous natural talent, but he just makes the most of what, what he's got. What about the neck stretch exactly, that he yeah, has? That's what I mean. He, he just you know, like, wants to be there, doesn't he? He does. And I'm not sure he'll dominate the carnival because great things happen wasn't there and Mark Cooler wasn't there and Harriet of Mott wasn't there. So there's a lot to come into to play here, but I think he's the most popular trotter in the country, and I'm looking forward to him becoming a millionaire if he holds together. So well done to Josh and to John. And, Some you know, good they, runs they, they up behind. I brought him back a couple of times yeah. from, from really tricky situations. Yeah, a couple of really good runs in behind. A few of them, to be fair. Ronald Jay's back in form, showed that at Ashburton. Mm. He's made his way into the Dominion now and deserves to be there. Uh, the almighty Johnson was good. The Lever's Gift has put up her hand to say she should yeah. be in that race. Outside that top eight for the Dominion, then there's a real battle to get into the Dominion because of the Which rankings. is great, isn't it? Well, we were talking to the connections of Hey Yo this week and they're really upset that they can't improve in the rankings. But horses like Ronald J just to keep improving and the Lever's Gift, and you sort of need to run top four to get improved yeah, well, her in your ranking. Yeah, her problem is she placed twice at Group 1 level. Of course, yeah. um, Great Southern Star was one of those. But she hasn't finished in the money since coming so back. So she's rated about a 93 or something? Yeah. So and it is, it's really hard to but get... But she's in this week, hey? Yeah. So she gets her chance off the front. And a couple probably drop out because some might race in the free for all and drop out also. But um, just talking about the trots at the carnival... Tornado Valley went to Cranbourne and smashed them in the Cranbourne Trotters Cup the other day. And I've never been a huge rah rah Tornado Valley man, but gee, he was good. Yeah, he was. He was really, really good. And in that race, Kai Valley Blur. We'll yeah. have a look at that now. Yeah. So, so here's Tornado Valley, and often he leads, and that's always advantageous around the smaller tracks in Australia. He sits parked here, and he just kills them. 
And on this, he's going to be an awfully hard horse to beat during the Inter-Dominion. But I spoke to Andy Gath and he said, ironically, considering he's an ex-New Zealander, he doesn't travel very well. So he's not coming. So scratch him, not coming to the carnival. Who is coming is the horse in fourth, now getting up the third, Kai Valley Blur. Um, he's been here before, successfully placed in the Dominion and also uh, placed in a national trot. He is coming, spoke to Brett Lilly this morning, he's coming for both days. They took a blood after this race and he was just a bit under his normal self. But Tornado Valley will be a factor at the end of Dominion because he'll be getting there fresh, Greg, when most of these other horses and will his be record, Mike, tired as Since going over there, he's won 12 of 16. It's It's been remarkable. I, I wasn't a believer because most of them were lead jobs. and it, it just wasn't betting much, but that was impressive the other yeah, day. Yeah, as like, impressive as that was, heavyweight heroes return. Yeah. Now, you were there on Friday I night. Was a, I, I've always liked this horse, and he's owned by good people, and... He walked past me in, in the stables, I was going down to talk about the open class horses, and he walked past me, I was like, wow, what's that? Todd McFarlane did a super job with this horse. He looked magnificent, vascularity was fantastic. He was up against two serious horses here. Temporale leads Le Monde outside him. Le Monde gallops for no reason, um, which is, Always been a little chink in his armour. But Temperale is a very good horse. We know that. Group 1 winner last season. Top of the straight. Or admittedly, he's had a 40 metre head start. But Heavyweight Hero pulls out, goes straight past him, and reminds us what a good horse he is. Here's the hero back at the park, and then we'll hear from the man who produced him in this outstanding form. From injury, and what a statement he's made tonight. Heavyweight Hero. He's got plenty of improvement in him as well, and he's worked home to win it well over second. Heard the whisper in third, Temperale. That had to be really satisfying. Yeah, it was. It was a great feeling, Mick. It, I mean, it's just been great to get him back to the races, and uh, to do what he did was a credit to him. What were the issues while we didn't see him for most of the last year? Well, it started off as, a, as abscesses, and then uh, end of last campaign, he had a bad quarter crack, and it's just been a long road to get that growing out and, and coming back. And then he's come back, and he's had more abscesses, and it's just an ongoing battle we got with him a little bit. He obviously has an open class motor. Is it a case of maybe throwing him into a nice mobile open class trot at some stage and seeing how he handles it? Yeah, I mean, eventually, yeah, definitely. I mean. It, while the good horses are away, we can sort of play around a little bit. He probably hasn't done his apprenticeship yet. He's only had a handful of starts, and it's only his fifth win tonight, so he hasn't really had that opportunity to work through the grades as yet. He looks magnificent. Um, he's obviously a big horse. You did say there's the abscesses and the hoof concerns. There's no soft tissue issues going forward? No, his legs are 100% sound. You know, that, that's never been a problem, which, which is great. The other problems are fixable, you know, with his hooves, so it's just a matter of keeping on top of those things and managing them. He's a good horse. Uh, if you go back to when he was two, he ran second to Custodian in the Jewels, and they've obviously had all sorts of problems. And he's trotted national records. Um, great yeah. story. One of the owners of this horse, um, his grandmother came up and said, she recognises us from the show. She said, oh, hello, Michael, nice to meet you. Her name's Mimi. Mimi's 97. And she went to the races to see Heavyweight Hero. She came back after the race and said, oh, we're celebrating, can I buy you a glass of wine? Hmm. And I was like, awesome. Well, thanks, Mimi. She, oh, she's at the races, full of life, full of energy, um, and she, just got to show you how a good horse can bring a lot of people to the races family members, friends, workmates. Tom McFarlane's a popular guy in North Island harness racing, and I think a lot of people are happy to see this horse back. He is my star for the week, not the horse for Todd. When he walked past me in the, in the, the stabling area, Greg, that's as good as I've seen a horse look fresh up in a long time. And he, race accordingly. He did a super job with that horse. He could win a Cambridge Flying Mile or something like that with the right run. I'm not saying he's going to jump up on a national trot, but he's got that natural speed that you can't train into them. They just need to be that good. The best of them, though, Greg, we had Chicago Bull a couple of days ago. What about poor old Monbay? Our old mate, we both love him. Monbay goes to the trials last Wednesday, I text Hopi and he was a bit like, oh, text me tomorrow. I was like, that he was sixth of seven. Which, that doesn't sound mm, good. Yeah. And the news came out over the weekend. Mombay has a splint bone problem, is going to need another operation. He was supposed to go to Kaikoura and race, Greg. It's been two years now yep. since this Dominion, which was a remarkable national record win. 
he's a truly great horse. I am absolutely adamant he sits alongside Ike and Doos it as the best trotter we've produced in this country. It may be take a moment as well since Lyle Creek. Yeah. But I severely fear we're going to see, see the best him again. of him again. Yeah. Oh, the best of him. Hopefully we'll see him again. But to see the best of him, it's hard to be uh, confident that that'll happen. Good luck to Greg and Nina being able to achieve that. We'd love to see him back and in this sort of form. But uh, it, it must just be heartbreaking for them. It would be because you're putting so much effort and you're getting that close and then this happens again. And it's just... When you see how good speeding Spur is and you see that Mon Bay is gone, it makes you realise what a great rivalry it would have been. Had mm. we had the last two and a half years of them racing 20 times against each other, what a cool northerly sunline type thing it would have been. And we have been robbed of that, but more so the hopes have been robbed of it. So I hope we'll see them back. I won't be counting the days down as... Right, Dominion Market, let's have a look at who will be there. Speeding Spur heads that up at $5. You did mention a couple of weeks ago, might have even been last week, at $8. He was a great bet. Uh, he's into 5 now. Harriet of Mott at $6. We, we actually said a month ago. A month yes, ago. Was it a month ago? There when you go. Mon Bay was $3.90, we said he won't start. Speeding Spur should be favourite. That doesn't mean he's going to win, but he should be favourite. Uh, Winterfell, well, he won't be there. No, so so the, the top seven or eight will be there. With Le Mans, by the way, they said he might have been tying up a touch. They weren't overly concerned, but it wasn't pretty to watch. The first page, I think most of them will be there, Greg, with the exception of Winterfell, with the confirmation this morning that Kai Valley Bleuer is coming. Yeah, and a decent trot race at Addington this week as well. Monty Python will be there. Um, Alderbeck got knocked over at Kai Cora, so... Uh, well, well, it's, it's a contest for horses trying to get into the race. Yep. And, of course, down the bottom there, at $61, is the defending champion. Actually went a very good race. Yeah. At Kai Kora. Um, well, he's, guaranteed a, he's guaranteed to start. He's guaranteed too. to start, and yeah, he can run a place. I think he's about $18 a place. So, well, yeah. it was $91 last year, so I wouldn't hurry to jump on at 61 to be honest. No. But OK, I asked you this last week who's your Dominion? I'm, I haven't moved off Mark Hawler. Okay. I know that surprised you before the flying mile, but I'm, I'm no, not changing my mind there. I've seen nothing to prove you wrong. I, I was with Temporale, but I'm thinking Speeding Spurs the safer of those options. But yeah, I'm Speeding Spur for what it's worth at the moment, but. Again, anything I might see at the cup trial could change my plan. At the moment, all the little bits of information, Greg, are actually mattering a lot more than they did when Mon Bay was in this race two years ago. We're going to take a break. When we come back, a couple of big races across in the States were run on Sunday. Nothing else takes me like you do. 